Happy Thanksgiving everybody and welcome to another video of Taylor Talks Comics. Today we are celebrating Thanksgiving with a Thanksgiving comic, The Musical Monsters of Turkey Hollow. All right, so this is The Musical Monsters of Turkey Hollow, adapted by Roger Langridge, um, but it's based on a original script and story by Jim Henson and Jerry Jewell way back when um, in, I believe, what's the time frame on this? Yeah, 1968 is when they wrote that, the special, and it just kind of, sat in purgatory forever. And then eventually it was adapted by Archaea Press um, through the Jim Henson Company. Posthumously, unfortunately, Jim Henson didn't get to see this. This came out a couple decades after he passed. And, um, but we have it here. So this is the hardcover. And just by comparison here, let me find this is probably a strange comparison, but this is your traditional standard size comic book. So as you can see, it is an oversized hardcover. And here's the spine with some great lettering by Lingridge. And here's the back. A Lost Treasure from Jim Henson and longtime collaborator Jerry Jewell. The cover price is $24.99. So you can see my copy looks dirty. This is normally a pure white. The copy I got from Cheap Graphic Novels is their Nick and Dent sale. I guess Nick and Dent meant Nick, Nick Dent and Dirty because there's no other, I guess the spine there is a little messed up, but otherwise I try to clean up as much as possible. So if it looks dirty to you, um, don't think that your copy will as well. So this is a fantastic book. It's a fantastic um, treasure just to have like this Jim Henson Lost Project but it's also fantastic to have Roger Langridge on the project. Roger Langridge um, is like an underground cartoonist. This is one of his earlier works, Fred the Clown. This collection from Fantagraphics came out in 2004. And it's just this series of comics that Langridge did of a character he wrote called Fred the Clown. It's mostly wordless, um, kind of a slapstick humor. I might do a video on this separately because Roger Langridge is becoming one of my favorites. But he also got to do Muppets. The Muppets om omnibus here includes an entire run of Muppets comics for Marvel. I'll probably do a separate video on this one too because I love it so much. But Roger Langridge did... He didn't do the art on every issue, but when he did the, the artwork, he was doing all the lettering and coloring and stuff too. Um, I believe the coloring. I should probably... I'll have my facts straight. No, he didn't even do the coloring. The coloring and letters were done by other people. Sorry. Writer and artist, Roger Langridge. Um, it, it just surprised me because normally he does the lettering and stuff too. But this is a fantastic omnibus. Typically this omnibus, omnibus is um, derided for being like an Ollie's find. So you can find it for like $10 at Ollie's sometimes. It's amazing and fantastic. I will die on the hill that this is a great omnibus that people should own. But like I said, I'll save that for another video. But just the fantastic work that Roger Langridge did in this omnibus, I think landed him the gig to do this. So um, it was one of Henson's daughters. It was Karen Falk wrote, wrote the intro, but one of his daughters, I think Lisa maybe, had the idea of turning this into a comic book. And because of the great work that Langridge did on the Muppets um, run, he was the first one they went to, and he loved the idea of, of doing it. And this is a great collection. I, not only is this just a great comic to have, but just the history behind it, and just like the, it's a great piece um, to have of, of history of just Jim Henson and 
the process that Henson and Drew will go through with writing. And like I said, uh, just in general, the, uh, the comic itself. So the, imp the opening in papers are this image. These are drawn by Roger Langridge, but these, and another one back here, but these are the musical monsters, the original concepts that um, Jewel and Henson were playing with. And then these are Henson's daughters, uh, Lisa and Cheryl in this image. So you get some process imagery of this project that never got made, but they were doing some concept stuff to pitch it to different networks. And this is printed on beautiful matte paper, which really helps uh, Roger Language's art sing. And you get to see it in its natural form in the coloring too. So the special is by Henson and Jewel. It's adapted, illustrated, and hand lettered by Roger Langridge. Colors by Ian Herring, with an assist by Jewel May Christopher. Christopher. Christopher? And then the designer was Scott Newman. Editor Cameron Chittock and assistant editor. And then the editor was Rebecca Taylor. And here's an intro written by, like I said, Karen Falk, which talks about the history of the special and what happened to it. And then the history of getting a hold of language to do it, which is great. And she works with the Jim Henson Company Archives. So the story, I'm just going to flip through these great pages with great artwork, is of Turkey Hollow. And one of these opening pages will show you. So you get these great wordless pages where a lightning bolt strikes this mound and emerges. Who knows what? You'll find out. And this is 1968. So it starts off, that, that happened in 1668. And then 1968. So 1668, you can see like the pilgrims and Native Americans also. Like a throwback to Thanksgiving. The first Thanksgiving, supposedly. Um, and right away, you, you meet this sister and brother that are, love playing music. And I love the scenes of playing music because this was a musical, as you can imagine, the musical Monsters of Turkey Hollow. And as you can imagine, Jim Henson's, all of his work included great music. Um, so it's hard to adapt that into a comic book, I can imagine. But Roger Langridge, he does talk about the challenges of that in the afterward. And you have this uh, cranky old man screaming at him to get off my land. And then this is the first glimpse you get of the monsters. And then this is the intro to the town. You get Turkey Hollow, Turkey capital of New Hampshire, human population, the guy's editing it here. So he says 27. Turkey population's in the 3000s. So really small town, only a little more than a couple dozen people. But you uh, have a, plenty of turkeys in town. I just love the rendering on Language's artwork. It just, it's so polished and clean. It's amazing that like he should be doing more cartoon or Muppets adaptations. Like I love more Muppets comics or Muppets anything from uh, Language. And then you get some songs too here um, that the sister sings. And then here's the first time you get a glimpse of, into what's happening in the story, truly. So the little boy here goes and plays his guitar. He's, he's trying to learn guitar. He's not very good yet. His older sister's teaching him. So he goes out to this, the brook where we're going to be by himself to play. And you see all his eyeballs watching him as he plays. And then he starts to notice somebody watching him. He tries to catch him. And just great lettering by language, which reminded me, that's why I brought this book out. It reminded me of this great classic comic book, or not comic book, sorry, children's book, uh, The Monster at the End of the Book. It, but it does remind me a lot of comic books because it does have like a lot of word balloons and just great lettering too. I might do a video on this because I love it so much. But one of the things that I love about this book so much is the lettering. Um... And the, art, the lettering here looks like it's inspired by that. I don't, I don't know. I'd love to interview Roger Language sometime. Maybe I can have him on my channel um, to talk about that, kind of the process of that. But it almost looks like it's inspired by that, the way it's drawn. But maybe it's just his own traditional style. Maybe it's one of those uh, perfect blends here. And then you see him playing more music with more great lettering, imagery, coming into a song, coming right out of the bush here. 
And that's when he meets the monsters. So that's when the story really takes off. And I don't want to spoil much at all, uh, but he becomes friends with the monsters. And as you can imagine, then they travel into his bedroom, they sneak into his bedroom, they sneak into his classroom. They're just constantly trying to be around this kid because they love him and his, his uh, music so much. He even has a teacher that calls, comic books are vulgar trash. And makes him write that repeatedly. Terrible teacher. Comics are great for kids. And this is a great children's comic. An all ages comic. I enjoyed it as an adult. If you're a Muppets fan or have a Mupp no Muppets fan in your life, I think this would be great. And then here is the old cranky old band we met in the beginning of the, the issue. Demons. He, he catches a glimpse of the monsters. And then the rest of the story is him trying to pursue the monsters, get them trapped. Um, eventually all the turkeys in town go missing and he blames it on the monsters. So he even has like a hired hitman. Where are they? That travels with him to uh, try to find out who stole the turkeys in town. And yeah. And then it ends in a great Thanksgiving feast. to prove that this is a Thanksgiving comic. How many Thanksgiving comics are there out there? I don't know. Leave, leave a comment down below if you know of any other Thanksgiving comics. And then there's the end. And then there's an afterward by Roger Langridge, written in 2014. And then here's some cool back banners. This is from Puppets to Panels. This is him sketching out what the, what the Muppets are gonna look like. And then him sketching out what would eventually become the cover. And then here's an actual page of script from Henson and Jewel with their handwritten notes. Um, I'm assuming those are Jim Henson's handwritten notes. And then here's Roger Langridge, Roger Langridge doing thumbnails based on that script page. And there's another script page, more thumbnails. Really cool to see that process of Langridge taking this old script that never got adapted and then him thumbnailing it out into a comic book. And here's some more... Um, Photographic photographs and images of Henson doing process stuff back in the 60s. These were taken when they built the what the uh, musical monsters were going to look like, which is really cool. And you get a little bio on Henson, a little bio on Jewel, and then a little bio on Roger Langridge. And the end papers here are like a behind the scenes set piece. I'm assuming this is Jim Henson himself. This is probably Jerry Jewel. Let's see what Jerry Jewel looks like. Yeah, that's Jerry Jewell. So that's Jim Henson and Jerry Jewell right here. And they're behind the scenes filming this scene of the musical monsters at the foot of his bed. Got a boom mic right there. A really cool piece by Roger Langridge. And like I said, the front and papers are different too. I always love when end papers are different on the front and back. And there's the back. So great Thanksgiving comic. I'd highly recommend this for um, parents to buy for their kids. I highly recommend it for any sort of Jim Henson fan in your life, uh, or Muppets fan in your life, you can, you can find this for pretty cheap and it's just a great little piece of uh, history in comics. So thank you guys for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more future videos. Comment down below with your favorite Muppets memories, if you've read this comic, if you're going to buy this comic, uh, your favorite Roger Langridge comics, as I'm continuing to explore more of his work. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.